Welcome to day 14 of our 30 day challenge. So close to halfway there. I hope you're still with me and that you're feeling okay after yesterday's tough workout. So today we are continuing to work at a higher level, again with some co-contractions. Now we're back to working on the co-contraction between the lower abs and the pelvic floor. We're gonna take a little bit of movement with it today. So we're doing a little bit of a lunge walk. So we're gonna do this along the mat. <clears throat> so other muscles are going to fire as you go through this process. It's not just the core and the pelvic floor that are co-contracting. But I want you, after having worked your way around all of the muscles through the lower limb, and even yesterday a little bit in the upper limb, I want you to start feeling the co-contraction while you are walking. So we'll start with taking our endurance contraction in the pelvic floor and our gentle co-contraction of the lower abdominals. And you're just going to have the hips nice and even. So you can hold this, you're gonna hold this the whole way through. You can place your hands onto your hips and we're going to start by stepping the left leg forward and we're going to go for a lunge. So just come down and up and then we go the right leg forward and then we come down and up, holding the co-contraction. Don't let go, keep holding, we're gonna go again. So this we go left, down, up, keep holding, right, down, up, keep holding, don't let go. We're gonna do another set. So don't let go, you still have your co-contractions, lower abdominals, pelvic floor. We go left, down, up, keep holding, right, down, up, and let go. All right, give everything a little shake. Now, we're going to go for our, our lunge forward. And when we lunge forward, we're going to pulse, come back up to here, and then we're going to lunge with the other leg, come down, pulse. Now, while we're pulsing in the lunge, we're holding the co-contraction, we're holding the pelvic floor contraction and the co-contraction with the lower abdominal. So those two uh, muscle groups working together, holding a little bit of tension while we go through this movement. So just take your co-contraction, pelvic floor, RPE4, lower abdominals, gentle contraction, not super hard. You just have engagement basically in both of these places. Take the hands onto the hips. We're going to bring the left leg forward. We're going to come down, keep holding. We do one, two, three, four, don't lose your pelvic floor contraction, five, six, seven, keep holding, eight, nine, and 10. Keep holding and release. All right, give everything a little wiggle, a little shake. All right, we go again. So you're going to take your pelvic floor contraction, your gentle co-contraction of the abs. So everything is a little bit engaged, not super hard, just a little bit engaged. You're holding it right the way through this. We're going 10 times again. This time the right leg goes forward, hands on the hips, take your step forward and one, two, keep holding. Three, don't lose it. Four, whoop. Five, keep holding. Six, don't let go. Seven, eight, nine, and 10. And stepping back and release. All right, give everything a little shake. So <laughs> you should be feeling this quite intensely. When you start to turn on all of these other muscles, you can start to feel the burning coming in the hamstrings and the quads and the glutes where you're coming up and down. It can be a little harder to keep that little gentle grip of the pelvic floor and the lower abs. But it's really important that that's where you place your focus so that you focus on that holding. And if balance is difficult for you in this lunging position, it is okay to put a chair so that you have your hand on something for when you're coming up and down so that you're not losing your balance. Now, you saw I looked at the camera and I felt a little shaky. It is good to have a single point of focus and really you know, move up and down with the hips as you, as you do it. We're only gonna do one more round of these, so don't worry, <laughs> we're almost there. So take the pelvic floor contraction, RPE4, 
endurance contraction, you're gonna hold it right through to the end, contract the lower abdominals, very gentle, activation, remember co-contraction, not a big strong hard as you could possibly do contraction. We're gonna start with the left leg, so stepping the left leg forward and one, keep holding, two, don't forget to breathe, three, four, don't let go, five, six, keep the co-contraction going, seven, eight, don't let go, nine and breathe, 10. Okay, stepping back, we come straight for the right side. All right, right leg forward, steady up, holding the co-contraction, don't let go. One, two, keep breathing, three, four, five, hold, six, seven, hold your pelvic floor, eight, come on, you got this, nine, and 10. And stepping back, Woo. almost stepped on the block. Give the legs a little shake. <laughs> Okay, so that is the strength portion of this video. For the relaxation, we're going to come down onto the floor and we're going for the half frog pose today. So for that, we are going to need a blanket because that'll give a little bit of support. So you don't want to ever be opening your leg out without having something soft underneath your knees because that would be uncomfortable. So we start coming to lying down on the side. We want to bring the bottom leg straight. The left leg comes up and you have about a 90 degree angle, both in the hip and in the knee. And then we're going to take the hips around and allow the foot to just flex it to start. Just make sure you have the right angles in the legs. We're gonna do two and a half minutes on this side. So two, 30. And I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, relax the head down and allow the body to be heavy here. So you really want to, as much as possible, release the weight of your hips. So by releasing your hips down onto the floor, you allow a gentle stretch on the adductors. And on the outstretched leg, you have a little bit of an opening in this position. So just allow everything to be heavy. Allow a deep relaxation. And if you feel that you need a little extra opening, you can just move the hips a little away from the leg. And it doesn't matter really what way that bent leg goes. As you relax your body into your own tension, generally there is a movement of the body. So as the connective tissue gently expands and allows its little bit of elasticity, that usually allows the body to rest a little deeper. Allowing the shoulders to be heavy. Making sure you're not gripping around the glutes. Noticing the difference between the left and right side of your pelvic floor. And then starting to take the first of three long, deep breaths. Breathe into the area you feel the tension. On each inhalation, allowing yourself to feel a little deeper into your body. Each exhalation, allowing yourself to relax even more than you thought possible. One last deep inhalation. And as you exhale, bringing the energy into your hands, taking your hands under your shoulders, turn out the toe on the back foot, and then press the energy into the legs. We're going to come for a little walking dog in between. So just feel into those legs as you step this out. And then drop the knees. We're going to take the position on the opposite side. So I'll just turn around so that I can still face the camera. So you can just turn over on your mat. Then we're going to do the same again. So come first to sideline. 
and then bring the bottom leg up so that you have about a 90 degree angle in the leg, foot flexed and about 90 degrees in the hip. And then you're gonna open so that the hip is opening out to the side. Then allow yourself to relax down. And as you relax into this position, we're going to be here again for two and a half minutes. Just notice where you're holding tension. Notice which part of your body feels this. So do you feel it in on the inside of the leg that is currently bent? If you do, I want you to send softness to that area. Try to release the full weight of your hips. You should feel a gentle opening and sometimes that feels like the leg sliding slowly away from you. But as you release the weight of your hips, that opening happens very gradually. Sometimes in little stages where you feel tension and then you feel release and then you find new tension and then new release. Are you holding tension around your shoulders or your neck? Try to be really soft there. And if you need to take the hips a little further, you can do that. Take whatever little adjustments you need in order to allow yourself to relax deeper into this position. Notice the pelvic floor. Notice the left side and the right side and see the difference. If you find any little tight spots when you scan your pelvic floor with your mind, send relaxation. Imagine space where you feel tension. Imagine lengthening and softness. Feel the release. And then starting to take the first of three long, deep breaths. Imagine you could take your breath all the way down to the tips of your toes. And as you exhale, imagine that your breath gathers the tension and breathes it away. Inhaling deeply and exhaling completely. And bringing some energy back into your hands. Turning out the toes on the back foot, gently pressing yourself up, coming to a little dancing dog. So finding a little bit of movement here, whatever little bit of movement your body feels like it needs. And then lowering the knees, coming around. And that is it for our little practice today. I hope that you enjoyed this challenging week. It is going to step up a notch for next week. Now, if you felt that you're not quite ready for stepping forward, if it feels like, oh, this was a really, really hard week, you can actually do these exercises again. But of course, do have a look at what's coming tomorrow. Give it a little try. You might find that it's easier than what we did this week. Everybody is of course different, but it is all progression. It is all little steps forward, taking you towards control. I wish you a really lovely day and I hope to see you again tomorrow.